Uh, my name is Judith Gross, and I'm. Uh, we did a systematic review, multifaceted innovation interventions to improve community participation. And there we go. Um, I'm the director of the Center on Community Living and Careers um, at the Indiana Institute on Disability and Community at Indiana University. We are uh, our state's USED, our University Center on Excellence and Disabilities, and um, the Institute is. And our center, um, we have six centers at the Institute, and my center focuses specifically on uh, areas of employment and community participation for people with disabilities. Um, and we do a lot of work um, in transition to adulthood. Um, so we train and support vocational rehabilitation counselors, community rehabilitation professionals, special educators, families, and young adults around uh, the transition to adulthood, uh, gaining employment and activities in the community for adult, um, adult participation. Um, the research I'm about to discuss was actually conducted while I was working at the University of Kansas, um, as was made evident in, in the last presentation, these systematic reviews can take a little bit of time to get done <laughs> and published, and I think um, I think mine took about three to four years as well. Um, the research, um, so I, as I said, it was done when I worked at the University of Kansas and I was working at the Research uh, and Training Center on promoting interventions for community living at the time. Uh, this is what I'm gonna talk about, um, our research topic and review purpose, uh, partnerships for supporting the research, the results briefly, some implications um, and challenges and benefits uh, incurred during this process. So the research topic and review purpose. Um, this topic was uh, originally to determine the effectiveness of multifaceted interventions and in promoting community participation outcomes for people with a disability. Um, and it was a, uh, a part of, uh, it was a research project that was a part of a five-year grant from the National Institutes on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research. Um, so the research center had received this grant and this uh, literature review was the first step in, or the first research project in that five-year um, grant cycle. Uh, so at the time, um, this was, like I said, one of the deliverables, and at the time I began this work, um, the American Institutes on Research um, had a grant for the Net Knowledge Translation for Disability and Rehabilitation Research, and they had sent out an email um, uh, talking about their ability to help promote the use of systematic um, meta-analyses and um, had basically inquired if folks were interested in their support. And so I checked in with our PI on the project and decided to, to inquire and check that out. Um, and in doing so, we ended up with, with new partners on this project. So um, the PI agreed to modify the scope of the review uh, to take advantage of the KTDRR support. Um, originally, the, the review was just gonna be a, a narrative systematic review of the literature. Um, but with this support, we were able to modify that to be a more rigorous uh, systematic meta-analyses. And, um, and so that brought in some new partners as well. So at the Research and Training Center on um, Interventions for Community Living, uh, that portion of, of this project um, was funding the university librarian as a partner in uh, uh, searching the databases and, and all of that and helping to do some of the, the initial coding research. Um, a research assistant um, and the funding support that paid for my services there. Um, and AIR, uh, through their grant, helped fund a statistical consultant and a research assistant and then provided technical support in the write-up process. So our research results, just real briefly, um, we found some effectiveness in studies in the following community participation outcomes. So um, in employment, we had uh, mixed, mixed findings. We had one that was significant and one that was non-significant. Quality of life, same, same sort of outcomes as we looked at those individual uh, 
outcomes. So when we look at community participation outcomes, I'm going to talk about this a little bit in the challenges, but one of the things that, um, that came up, uh, let me just back up a minute here to our purpose. So to determine the effectiveness of multifaceted interventions in promoting community participation outcomes for people with a disability. So one of the big challenges we had is just that, that purpose in and of itself, because multifaceted interventions is not well defined and not well studied. It's not a concept that is clearly defined out there. We had found one other systematic review that addressed the concept of multifaceted interventions and the way they conceived multifaceted interventions wasn't how we were thinking of it um, when we began this research. And so simply defining what constituted a multifaceted intervention um, was a challenge. And, um, and then what, what constituted a community participation outcome? And then how do you define a person with a disability? Um, and these things, we think they seem pretty simple as we do our protocols for our systematic reviews and we think we've clearly defined things. Um, and then we dig into the literature and we find out we haven't even scratched the surface on those definitions. Um, so when we're looking at community participation outcomes, we were identifying outcomes that were specific to um, activities that made the person be in and of the community. So um, things like employment and education and recreation and civic participation like voting. Um, but we also looked at um, kind of byproducts of community participation. Things where there was already a literature base that connected community participation to a positive um, outcome of some sort. Um, so, so things like uh, quality of life, um, uh, autonomy, uh, social skills, um, self-determination, these types of things um, were what we considered to be secondary outcomes of community participation that we also looked at. And so, um, like I said, employment, quality of life, and adult learning and education um, yielded some positive uh, results of the effectiveness of multifaceted, um, multifaceted interventions. Mental health, um, there were two studies of aging adults where the control group actually performed better. And then we found non-significant outcomes um, included in the topics of activities of daily living, autonomy, independent living, social skills, and just what we had generally defined as community activities. Um, again, if you want greater detail on these results, you can always go read the meta-analyses. Um, but um, a little bit, I would think what is most important about what we're going to talk about today is, is the benefits and the, and the challenges in this process for me. Um, oh, whoops, I forgot I had an implication slide. Sorry. Uh, so some of the implications we found in our research was that um, there really was limited support, um, although there was some support for multifaceted interventions. So that suggested the need to do more research to determine the effectiveness of, of the concept of multifaceted interventions broadly, um, as well as specifically related to certain groups of people with disabilities or certain types of outcomes. Um, it, just uh, anecdotally, um, I noted that several of the studies that we looked at um, when there were multifaceted interventions, they were often targeting uh, populations where there was maybe a challenge with executive functioning. So the multifaceted intervention might be one that, um, for example, for someone who might have a traumatic brain injury, the multifaceted intervention might be something that is focusing on helping them um, with their organizational challenges or their time management or their um, uh, self-control um, types of, of, of issues. Um, and the uh, other intervention piece might be an employment component, right? Um, so it might be related to their, their work in the community. And so a lot of times those multifaceted interventions seem to, to combine in that way. When we defined multifaceted interventions, we really were looking at, um, we defined it as being uh, two, two interventions within different domains, right? So um, if employment was, was our research topic area, our research outcome area. Um, if both of the interventions were focused on 
on their employment skills, building their employment skills, we did not consider that a multifaceted intervention. But let's say they had a, um, an intervention focused on building social skills and an intervention focused on access to transportation and they were measuring um, their ability to, to get employed and stay employed if those things were in place. We considered that to be a multifaceted intervention, something where the intervention components were within two different domains of their, of their life activities. And so that made it, it very challenging and that um, brought some challenges in um, how we looked at the literature. So uh, knowledge, um, while we had this great partnership with AIR and um, and supports and the statistical analysis and doing the research, the knowledge of disability varied greatly among our research team members. Um, myself being, uh, having a doctoral degree in, in areas of disability, I had a librarian who had limited disability knowledge except previous work she had done with our center. Um, I had a young adult who he himself had a disability and I had hired as a research assistant through Project Search. Um, I also had a research assistant through AIR with limited knowledge of disability and a statistical consultant with limited knowledge of disability. So I found that we, we've spent a lot of time really talking about what, what these terms meant, what it mean to have a disability. And you know, you think you've got that and then you dip into the literature and you find that everything you think you've clearly defined is kind of being thrown out the window because of the way the world has defined these things. Um, and we were dealing with articles where they were doing social security definitions of disability um, versus other more medical definitions of disability. Um, and we really had to think about what the range of disability meant um, and which types of disabilities we needed to exclude from our research. Um, and so we really narrowed our focus to target populations that were um, within the, the target group for our research center on promoting community intervention. So they, they had an identified, while it was a cross disability group, they had an identified target group and we tried to limit um, the research to uh, disabilities that would fall into the group that this organization would have typically served. And um, so that meant leaving out what were primarily medical diagnoses of, of condi medical conditions of disability. So maybe um, someone had a stroke and there was a, a whole article about interventions with stroke, um, uh, people who'd experienced strokes. Um, but there was no clarity in the description about how that impacted their daily functioning, right? There was no, no clear description of how that impacted disability. Things like diabetes or obesity or hoarding were listed as disabilities. And we had to really think about whether or not that fell into our definition of disability. Um, and so that took a lot of time um, and uh, thinking about, you know, what constituted a community participation outcome and the interventions we had a criteria that they had to be done in a community-based setting well what did that actually mean when we said community-based setting did did we count um, settings that were maybe in hospital-based settings where they had fabricated an environment to do their study so it became complex and uh, we found that there was just a lot of the consensus building and the coding process was extremely iterative. And because of the complexity of these definitions and trying to really suss out what constituted community, community participation outcomes, what was multifaceted, we found that all decisions were, were made in partnership. Right, so there was never one person who said, I'm excluding, you know, I did this review of like, 500 articles and we're kicking them all out the door. Like we literally discussed everything because the, def the defining was just so complex. Um, other things that were, were challenging, um, my lack of statistical knowledge regarding meta-analyses made me uncomfortable. Uh, clearly my issue, <laughs> but, but it made it difficult um, for me because I never knew exactly um, what was being done. And I really had to trust my, my partners from AIR and they were fabulous to work with. Um, and then just the write-up, the manuscript process, the entire research process is really quite lengthy. Um, other um, things I just wanted to note, um, wanted to note benefits. Uh, there, 
while there were challenges to having such a diverse research team, there are also benefits. Um, the very specialized knowledge um, meant that there were a clear distribution of responsibilities and deep knowledge in those areas. Um, so, you know, we had a librarian who was very good at database searches, understood all the different terms um, and which ones you used where and why. And um, I never could have gone that deep into the databases. Um, other benefits, I also have uh, new colleagues at AIR and I wouldn't hesitate to reach out if I thought there was a question, a challenge or a project on which we could work together. Um, another benefit, as I mentioned before, we did a more rigorous review. The original plan was to do a narrative systematic review. Um, so the meta-analysis filled the research gap and bonus was good for my CV. So um, quick summary of, of our project and happy at the end of all this to answer any questions if you have any. Thanks.